Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. We'll begin today's video by adding a few enhancements to the project layout view, which is basically a list of scenes and their game entities. By doing so, we'll also prepare it for additional functionality later down the line. First I'll add the ability to change the name of each scene. This is done by adding a text box that becomes visible whenever the user wants to rename a scene. We add a button for the user to click in order to make the text box visible. The text box will collapse when we press enter, tap or the escape key. This is handled by the style that we are using for the text box. Then we add a command that is executed when a new name is entered. Of course, we also want this to be an undoable action. So we record the old name and add an undo redo action for it. Note that the command is only executed if the new name is different from the old name. Finally, we add the click event handler for the rename button, which simply makes the text box visible and moves the focus to the text box. Speaking of focus, the current implementation clears the focus altogether from the user interface which makes it impossible to use the keyboard after using such a text box. The user then has to click somewhere within the editor in order to regain keyboard focus. I'm going to fix this problem next. I'm not sure what the best way is for doing this, but here I just move the focus to any parent control that contains the text box and can have the keyboard focus. So we just move up the visual tree and try to set the keyboard focus for any parent. Somewhere we should come across a control that can have the focus. Then I just refactor this part to a new method, which is called when we press a key on the keyboard. If the enter key was pressed, we move the focus up. The tap key will automatically move the focus to the next control. We also move up the focus when the user presses escape to cancel their changes. I would also like to update the property that is bound to the text box when the text box loses the focus. This is to handle the case where we use the mouse to move the focus, which obviously wouldn't trigger the key down event. These methods apply to all text boxes in the application. The renaming text boxes have the same behavior, with the addition of becoming collapsed after losing their focus. Note that we also don't bother with setting the focus, because when the text boxes collapse, their focus is automatically moved. The lost focus method we just wrote should also be added to the global text box style.
Now we can undo and redo the changes we make using the text boxes without having to click the application. This was also a reported issue, which I'm going to mark as closed. Thanks again for all your efforts to make Primal better for everyone. By the way, the proposed solution here works too, so it's your choice how to solve it. In my case, it felt more natural that the focus didn't move to the next control, but it went up to the parent of the currently focused control. Feel free to try both solutions to see what works better for you. Great. Another issue that was reported is that we can't use the mouse wheel to scroll through game entities. This is because the list box that we are using to display the list of game entities has its own scroll viewer, which eats up the mouse wheel events, preventing them from reaching the scroll viewer in the layout view. We'll stop using list boxes in favor of tree views in the future, but for now I decided to just use a new template for the list box in the layout view. Although the proposed solution here should also work, so thanks again for suggesting it. Here I'm going to duplicate the list box style, and the only thing different is that I'll remove the scroll viewer. This should fix it. While we are here, let's enable the user to drag and drop geometry asset files onto the list box in order to create game entities with geometry components. This way we don't have to create an empty game entity, add a geometry component and set its mesh asset every time we want to use a mesh. We'll work on that in a minute. I'm also going to add a remove button so that we can remove game entities using the mouse. The remove button is only visible when the mouse is over a game entity. We use a trigger to set its visibility. We already created the style for remove buttons in the import settings configurator. I'm going to move it to the global style dictionary and modify it a little. It will basically consist of a white circle with a red cross in the middle. So now I'm going to use this style for the remove buttons instead of defining them locally.
and I'd also like to select the first game entity in the list when the editor is loaded. Now we can delete entities, which is again an undoable action. We can also use the mouse wheel to scroll through the list of entities. Here we can see that we have the same remove buttons in the import settings configurator as well. Let's also make it possible to delete selected entities using keyboard. For this, we add a key down event handler and remove entities when the user presses the delete key. Well, actually, let's do that later. It's more fun to create entities by dropping mesh assets. Yeah, let's do that first. This is about the same as dropping mesh assets onto the mesh icon of a geometry component. So we can copy and paste that code here. If the scene is active, we get a list of all mesh assets that were dropped and create a game entity for each one of them. Each entity is also created in engine when it's activated. Then we create and add the geometry component that uses the mesh asset. At the end, we execute add game entity command for each entity. Oh yeah, this method can't return a task since it's an event handler that doesn't return anything. It is allowed to be asynchronous though. Now we can select all these assets here and drop them in the layout view, which will create a game entity for each mesh asset. Again, we can undo and redo this. And of course we can change the mesh that's used for one or more game entities at the same time.
Let me also close this issue on GitHub. Again, always feel free to report any issues that you find, which is extremely helpful for me to go and improve the engine and the editor. There's also a little bug in the undo redo for entity selection. I'm going to fix that by adding a new list in order to record the indices of the selected items. We use indices because after adding or removing entities, the list box items are regenerated by the item container generator of the list box, so we can't use the items, but their indices remain the same. Of course, we should call container from index here. Let me do another attempt of fixing this typo, which failed miserably the first time around. And that's it basically for this episode. Normally, I would tell you what we are going to do in the next video, but this time I'm not sure what that will be. We could either try to render what we have, or we could add support for material inputs in the editor. I guess that's going to be a surprise for the next video then. Hopefully you'll be back to see what's up, and with that I say thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time.